Good morning everyone. Today we are going to learn about one of the greatest court jesters from Bengal who has made millions smile with his ready humor, brought many to justice and provided solutions to many a problem with his ready wit and industry. Some may argue that he is not real, only a make-believe character, but who cares as long as he keeps bringing some smile to many faces, makes us relax and relieve all our tensions even for a bit. Today we will learn about Gopal Bhar or Gopal the Jester and see how with his ready wit he finds a solution to a problem which is unique in its own right. A problem which involves a hilsa fish. What was the problem you ask? We will come to that shortly but first of all let's learn a bit more about Gopal the person. So Gopal was a court jester, that is, he earned his living by cracking jokes and creating humorous situations in royal courts. He served in the royal court of Raja Krishnachandra, an 18th century ruler of Bengal. He was recognized as one of the nine gems in the royal court. The nine gems were called so because of their talent and their creativity. And Gopal was renowned for his quick wit and ability to jest, that is, create humor, make fun in all situations. Numerous short stories are woven around his exploits, that is, his adventures. Now let us talk about the themes of this particular text. This text provides an outline image of a Bengali middle class family. It makes us culturally aware by providing before us a slice of Bengali culture. And finally, it tells the importance of wit and intelligence to achieve anything in life. Before we move further, let's stop for a moment and talk about comic strips. Because you see, the story which is present before us is not a regular story in a regular form. This story is a comedy and it is provided in the form of a comic strip. So before we move further, it is only fitting that we learn a bit more about comic strips, how they work. So, comic strips are a series of picture panels usually arranged side by side to provide a narrative or a chronological sequence. The word chronological comes from chronos which means time. So, in this sequence, from beginning to end, the situations are arranged serially in a sequenced manner. The stories are usually original but longer stories on novels etc. too are often converted into comic strips. Comic strips have a special mass appeal and often find their own corner in newspapers and magazines. You may even find some comic strips in the local newspaper that you uh, take back home. The comic in comic strips may not just only mean comedy. They can be political, adventurous, educational, fantastical in nature as well. Marvel and DC are two prominent names in their comic universe with their superhero comics. We are talking about Iron Man, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, etc. here. So now let's move on to a pictographic depiction of Gopal, the Chester. This is how Gopal is imagined as a comic hero. You can Google him or you can type uh, his name on YouTube and you will find many videos with this face. And this is a real sculpture of Gopal Bhar, a statue of the person as he actually looked. Now let us take a look at some comic strips. For example, this is a political comic which gives us the way to save democracy. It says JP's ready cure for all ailments. This is a political comic strip created by the great comic artist Arkin Lakshman. We also have a superhero comic. This is about Superman. We also have a comic which uh, is a daily narrative on regular office situation and we also have a comic whole comic book. This is an informative comic book for COVID-19 awareness. Comic books are a bound collection of strips each of which typically tells a single story or a gag that is joke in a few panels or else a segment of a continuous story. Most of the more popular newspaper comic strips eventually are collected over a varying period of time and published in book form. 
Now, before we move on to the character bit, let us talk for a moment and think, why should we read this particular story? Let me ask you something. Have you ever been bored to death because people have nothing else to do or talk about? Really, that's that's like super irritating. What wouldn't we give to just change the topic? The only problem is it's not like we are so bored with narcos and that for a change of taste, we go to special ops. Or you are bored with daily corona news, so you start watching Ramayan or Mahabharat for diversion. Or isn't just like that? This comic strip follows Gopal who, with his crazy intelligence, changes the boring old topic of Shoshe Elish just like that. How? Ah, don't we all want to know that? Now let's talk about the characters. We have Raja Krishnachandra, we have the courtiers, we have the royal gatekeepers and Gopal himself. There is Gopal's wife and the townspeople and finally the Hilsa of course. Now let us talk about the conflict in this text. It is going to be a really interesting conflict. But first of all, what is a conflict? In literature, conflict signifies the struggle between two opposing forces. Conflict is that element which makes a story really interesting. In this era of Mahabharata reruns, think of the conflict between the Pandavas and the Kauravas. Or if you prefer Ramayan, then think about Ram and Ravan and the conflict between them. The conflict present in this strip is of external nature. The people can't stop talking about Hilsa. The king can't listen any more about Hilsa. In the middle of this all, there is Gopal who suddenly finds himself burdened with the epic quest of making people forget all about Hilsa for a day. A really difficult conflict if you consider the Bengalis and their crazy fondness over fish. And Hilsa, in fact, is one of their most favorite fish. You see, Percy Jackson's quest to find the lightning thief was perhaps easier. So how does he resolve this conflict? Let's get now to the crux of the matter. Let's learn the summary of this particular text. So it was the season of Hilsa. People were talking about Hilsa and people were eating Hilsa. The court too was abuzz with only Hilsa. The king was super irritated with this fishy talk. In a crazy turn of events, the king challenged Gopal that with all his wit, even he cannot make people stop talking about the fish. But wonder of wonders, Gopal accepted the challenge and here we enter round two, that is Gopal versus the crowd. So how does Gopal proceed? Gopal makes great preparation to go to the market. He really dresses up. Oh well, he shaves off half his face, smears that is rubs ash all over his body and puts on old and torn clothes. Boy, what was he doing? Gopal basically looks like a madman. And he goes to the market. And this madman buys a nice big hilsa. People can't take their eyes off Gopal and thinks him to be mad. So Gopal, amid all this, he reaches the palace and here we too reach the third and final round of this match. So what's happened in the final round? The royal gatekeepers and the security people fail to recognize Gopal. Well, who would with his face, head half shaven off, smeared with ash and dressed in torn clothes, looking totally like a mad person, who will recognize Gopal? But Gopal asks for an audience with the king and naturally he is refused. So he starts singing and dancing in front of the palace. Wow, the audacity of it. The raucous, the loud noise, the commotion that is, reaches the king and he asks his men to bring the madman near him. Gopal comes and makes everyone realize that in between they had all forgotten about Hilsa in his hand. So you see the people were so focused on Gopal, the madman, his dress, his looks, his music, his dance, that nobody remembered the big fish that was in his hand. And thus, finally, Gopal wins the challenge. Now let's talk about the tone and setting. The narrative moves from the royal court to Gopal's house and to the market and then back to the court. 
All these movements serve to show a slice of life and culture in Bengal and obviously Bengali food culture. It projects the eternal fascination of Bengali people for Machhed Jhol, that is fish curry and the craze of Hilsa above it all. The story, true to the comic spirit, maintains humor throughout the text. However, the gentle humor also has a harmless satiric edge to it, as Gopal goes on to show how easily people's mind can be diverted. Now let's talk about the humor. The quick presence of wit provides the humor in this comic strip. Gopal wins the challenge because of his out-of-box thinking. His win celebrates the rebel in us who is always ready to do something different and is not afraid even if it seems a little odd. Now let us talk about the title. The story has a single focus. It goes on to celebrate Gopal's sharp wit and the extent he can go to win a challenge. Here the challenge was difficult as the antagonist, that is the villain, even though is a fish, is one of the most favorite fish of all Bengalis. So naturally they cannot stop speaking about it. However, using his wit, Gopal shocks the people and thus make them forget all about the fish by bringing their attention on his appearance. And because of this dual, albeit that is but though of a humorous nature between Gopal and the fish, the title is perfect. Now before we move on, let's take a look at the main villain. So this is how Hilsa fish looks like, the still uncooked version. And finally, let's have a look at, wow. So this is the actual mouth watering piece of Hilsa that has made all the people abuzz with gossip. It's anyway, let's finish this here because it is making me, my mouth water. So thank you. Hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.